Hi there, I'm CBS 8's Jenny Day. So glad to have you with me as I take you around San Diego. A lot to get to, including a school safety measure on the upcoming ballot. Why the apple picking season in Julian is already over. And details on a program called Cash for Trash. But let's first start with this weekend. The Miramar Air Show is back for the first time since 2019. This year's theme is Marines. Fight, evolve, win. Here's a look at what you can expect. For the first time, there will be an Innovation Tech Expo showcasing local companies that are researching ways our armed forces can use their technology. Also new this year, the Blue Angels Jets. Coming back with brand new jets, brand new uh, C-130J. What you'll get is a new twist on a lot of the old maneuvers with the Super Hornet. I think you'll find that it's a fantastic platform. It's a little bit bigger, it's got more power. Record crowds are expected this weekend. The Blue Angels commander says there's been a lot of buzz about military aviation since Top Gun Maverick came out this summer. Speaking of, our own Marcella Lee got a chance to preview one of those main attractions by flying with the Blue Angels. Here's how it all went. Right below those three little bumps is a little shelf. I got my dad's picture in my pocket. Awesome. It's bright and early and we made it to the operations building. This is where I'm going to get my training, learn how to breathe and some other really important things, what to touch, what not to touch inside as I get ready to fly with the Blue Angels. So excited. Come on. All right. This is the Flight Operations Center and it's time to go get some training before I take off. I'm Petty Officer, Second Class Cameron Tuzon. I'm from San Diego, California. Lieutenant Commander Griffin Stengel is going to be your pilot. You can call him Seven, you can call him Push Pop, you can call him Dude. So what we're going to go over today is cockpit familiarization. This is everything that you're going to see in the cockpit. Uh, what to touch, what not to touch. Mainly anything that's black and yellow. Don't touch, don't touch. Absolutely a million times don't touch it. Okay. Uh, these are the leg straps that are already set up pretty much similar to this. So this strap's gonna go around your ankle. This one's gonna go around your upper thigh. This is the altitude, speed. So by the time you hear ready or the R in ready, you're already taking a deep breath in and you're already flexing. <laughs> and relax. Gotta tighten the cuffs. Oh, all right, training's wrapped up. Am I ready? Ma'am, are you ready? I, I, that's what I'm asking you. Do you think I'm ready? I, th I think you're ready. All right, let's head to the tarmac. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, ma'am, so this is the flight line, and uh, that is your that is your plane. See where the yellow helmet is? Yes. There's those three bumps below the yellow helmet. Ready to go? Yeah. All right, let's do yep. it. Okay. All right, ready for the cool part? Yeah. He's going to run out in front of the jet. Give me the signal to start it up. So watch your hands. Right now, you see our rolls we just did. 
Flying back through our smoke trail. And a little pull. Hey, we, we went just over 7 Gs on that. I see 7.2. There you go. We're coming left for the carrier break. Ready, hit it. Oh, she added that it's not lost on her that she got to sit in the same kind of fighter jet that men and women who serve this country are flying while on deployment. So, so brave, truly an amazing experience. Well, did you think the heat wave that lasted nearly two weeks in late August and early September was record breaking? Well, you would be right. And we're getting another heat wave right now. In this Earth 8 report, meteorologist Sean Stiles talked to the National Weather Service to see just how many new records were set during that late summer swelter. If you were in Southern California last week or the week before and witnessed that historic heat wave, you would be right in saying it's once in a lifetime, but in actuality, it's part of a trend that's been building for the past decade. Six of the last 10 years have been the hottest on record, not just summer, but all year. 2014, 2015 are the benchmark years for San Diego year round. Alex Tardy is a meteorologist with the National Weather California. Service and explained how the heat wave became record breaking. In late August, Starting really August 27th, 28th, we were looking at the potential for a one week long heat wave. Um, it turned into almost two weeks long. Uh, this uh, heat wave is expansive, long lasting, and completely encompassing much of the state. And that oppressive heat covered a much larger area than just San Diego. So not only just Southern California, a heat wave across California, Nevada, Utah, that extended almost two weeks, almost 14 days. The forecast models had temperatures being five to 10 degrees above average, but instead they jumped 15 as much as 20 degrees above average. We just didn't know at the time in late August that it would last so long and end up being one of the hottest heat waves in California uh, in history. Part of what sustained the heat wave was the leftover monsoon moisture and overnight lows staying in the 70s and in some cases the 80s. It all combined to being a significant heat wave in a lot of cases ranked one and two when you look at a two week period. Even the coast wasn't spared where temperatures were in the mid to upper 90s and this heat wasn't driven by Santa Ana winds. And there's the Great Basin, the high pressure expands and but by a dome of high pressure over the entire west. In Salt Lake City, in Sacramento, exceeded all time highs. For, for example, uh, Salt Lake City reached 107. They'd never reached 107 in September. Uh, Sacramento reached 115. They never reached 115 in, in September. I know it's hard to believe, but San Diego could have been even hotter. We were on the edge of it. We weren't in the epicenter. The epicenter was Sacramento to Salt Lake. And with a third year of La Nina emerging, the dome of high pressure could return. This is looking like, you know, a, a pattern that doesn't generally want to break down and it's affecting us in the winter and it's affecting us in the summer with heat waves like we just went through. And after over 10 days of an excessive heat warning across much of California, if you can imagine this, it took a tropical storm, another historic event coming within 100 miles of San Diego to finally put an end to it. Sean Stiles, Earth 8. As mentioned, from heat to rain, Julian, the mountain community famous for its apples, is facing tough times. Orchards ruined by bad weather. There is an overriding sense of disappointment. A late freeze last spring and then that powerful storm that ripped through the region did major harm. CBS 8 Steve Fiorina learned that many popular pick your own orchards have already closed their gates for the season. It's a September tradition. Drive out to Julian and pick apples. The opportunities are limited this year, though. Many orchards already closed for the season. 
Apple picking is still fun, where you can find an open orchard and reach high enough to pull down one or two. Most of the fruit, though, hit the ground. Bad weather, twice. We've been hurt. I think we probably did about a third the business we did in previous years. And Steve, it's a catastrophe for the town of Julian because it's not just me and the orchard there at uh, Vulcan Valley Apple Farm, but all of the apple orchards in the area experience these 80 to 90 mile an hour winds and the and the four and a half inches of rain in one in one day. Of course, we love the rain, but not the wind because it put about half our crop on the ground. Slow going on Main Street and nearby. Lots of businesses that rely on a place like our 25 acre farm that just brings thousands of people up here every year. And when they don't come or we had to close, it really hurt a lot of businesses. Yes, you can still buy a slice of pie. You can still get apple pies. You can still get apple pies. Yeah, definitely. We have plenty of apple pies and, and all our other variety. Crowds are definitely down for now. Next on the calendar, Halloween and Thanksgiving. We're going to have thousands and thousands of pumpkins. We invite everybody to come up here. We didn't grow them this year because of the drought. Instead, we're bringing them in from Oregon and Idaho. As for the devastated apple crop, it does help to have a sense of humor. Our uh, motto, uh, very similar to some of the sports teams we know, is uh, wait till next year. There are still a few places you can pick, but call in advance. You need to make reservations. Steve Fiorina, CBS 8. Steve, thank you. Well, as I continue to take you around San Diego, the fugitive known as Fat Leonard remains in Venezuelan custody. Officials say they have started the extradition process to bring him back to the U.S. Leonard Francis was arrested in Venezuela while trying to board a flight to Russia. He was scheduled to be sentenced this week, but escaped house arrest in Torrey Highlands earlier this month. He pleaded guilty in 2015 in the largest Navy bribery scandal in U.S. history. Well, Election Day is fast approaching. San Diego voters will once again be voting on a school bond measure. When ballots start going out next month, many of you will see something called Measure U. It's a $3.2 billion bond measure for the San Diego Unified School District. The district says the money would be used for safety precautions and to continue renovating its schools. CBS 8's Jasmine Ramirez shows us how the district wants to spend the money and how much it might cost you. The school district has more than 200 campuses and many of the buildings are more than 50 years old. This money would help pay for much needed repairs and upgrades. Measure U would pay for roof repairs, plumbing, fixing air conditioners and removing asbestos from walls. What um, Measure U was talking about are things that I could very much see directly helping um, my school. Allie DeBoer is the student body president for San Diego High. Many students and parents are also happy to hear the money will allow for more security features like cameras, fencing and lighting. And I think safety and security is like main priority, obviously, with some of the scary school things that have been happening. If this bond sounds familiar, it's because it's an extension of the district wide property tax of six cents per one hundred dollars. The voters have consistently approved our measures, you know, every time we've come to them because they understand the importance. For people who are paying property taxes, you will continue paying the same amount. You can never really go wrong with putting more money towards schools. I mean, it's funding, you know, the education of our youth. And um, I feel like it's always, you know, reiterated everywhere that the youth are our future. And that's um, true. There's also exciting news for teachers and staff. More than $200 million of the bond would help build affordable housing for employees. San Diego Unified would be the first district in the county to offer employee housing. Election day is November 8th and ballots will begin going out to registered voters on October 8th. Jasmine Ramirez, CBS 8. Jasmine, thanks. And the Grossmont Union High School District is taking a huge leap toward a greener future. The school district just unveiled their new state-of-the-art transportation services center. 17 electric buses are ready to go. The district plans to transition to an all-electric bus fleet in the near future. District leaders say the cutting-edge technology will set a new bar for innovation in school transportation. 
Well, we are now getting a better look at how California will attempt to take a step forward in its battle against the homelessness crisis. Care courts will specifically focus on the mental health of people experiencing homelessness. The law is the first of its kind in the nation. These new care courts don't come without controversy, but they do aim to make medication, therapy, even housing mandatory for those with severe mental illness or addiction who are living on the street. Under the new law, a family member, first responder, or others can ask a judge to draw up a year-long treatment plan. Those who refuse could be placed under a conservatorship and ordered to comply. That's why some groups like the ACLU are against the idea, saying it violates one's civil rights. We talked to the County Director of Behavioral Health about the new civil court proceedings. They involve determining the likelihood of future harm uh, either to oneself or to another person. Yeah, right now, those who are suffering can be held against their will at a psychiatric hospital for up to three days, but are released if they agree to take medication and follow up with other services. San Diego is one of seven counties that will be the first to have care courts. They will be up and running October 1st of next year. Also, an initiative that pays people who are homeless to pick up trash is back in downtown San Diego. CBS 8's Jasmine Ramirez talked with the organization leading the efforts about how this cash for trash is a win-win for the community. People experiencing homelessness picked up nearly 200 bags of trash on the program's first day back this past Monday. It gives folks a reason to wake up, uh, and a, an opportunity to contribute to the cleanliness and, and overall environment around their surroundings. Cash for Trash is helping those who are living on the streets while also making the streets a cleaner place. The Lucky Duck Foundation's program gained traction fast, even attracting national attention. Participants picked up more than 44 tons of trash during a four-month pilot program. With so much success, they decided to bring it back. People are paid $2 for each trash bag they collect. So many of them would say, you know, this might not sound like a lot of money, but it goes a long way. I can get an MTS pass or I can buy some Band-Aids or uh, go, you know, cover uh, co-pays for prescription medications. The concept is even boosting morale within the homeless community. It gave folks a common enemy. That common enemy was the trash. And so they had that, that to sort of rally around and you started to see some uh, just improved attitudes and demeanors and behaviors. We're going to do all of San Diego. We're going to do all of downtown. We're going to take over, clean it up. Yay! The program is meeting twice a week in the mornings at 16th and Commercial Streets downtown. The Cash for Trash program will be happening every Monday and Thursday until at least the end of this year. Reporting downtown, Jasmine Ramirez, CBS 8. Loved his enthusiasm. Jasmine, thanks. Well, if you live in the city of San Diego, your monthly water bill will be going up again in 2023. The city council just approved a 3% rate hike. The San Diego Water Authority, the city's main supplier, announced a rate hike recently, driving the city uh, the city's move to increase its rates for a second time in two years. The Water Authority blames increased rates on inflation and higher energy costs. Well, Barrio Logan, you know it. It is a vibrant neighborhood. Art, food, and music can be found in abundance. But with the growing notoriety is coming the very real cost of gentrification. People who've lived there for years say they're being forced out as rent skyrockets in the once affordable neighborhood. And as CBS 8's Regina Urita reports, many worry that could crush the heart of San Diego's Chicano culture. With live mariachi music, eating tacos from Las Cuatro Milpas, watching lowriders cruise past vibrant murals etched on nearly every concrete surface that makes up Chicano Park. It's just some of the ways to describe the culture of Barrio Logan. If I would see the friends hanging out with each other, I would see the uh, people that have known each other for decades kind of, you know, congregating in the same area every weekend. It's also become an economic engine for hundreds of local artists and business owners like Maritza Garcia, who was born and raised in the neighborhood. 
You see the doggy? The predominantly Mexican-American locals have tried to reduce the crime rate by revitalizing the area. Many of the older small owners have put in countless hours of labor to generate success. But because of that success, it also means the property value in Barrio Logan has gone up. According to locals, the revitalization has come at a cost, fueling developers to build new apartments and businesses, but at a higher cost in rent, forcing longtime Chicano families to move out. Feeling happy because I grew up with friends, because I grew up with family. In an emotional interview, Garcia tells me her longtime neighbors who once paid affordable rent have now been forced to leave Barrio Logan. She now fears her family will find themselves in the same situation. The issues have sparked a furious debate centered on access to affordable housing and displacement and whether the recent changes have been positive for the existing community or simply a prime illustration of successful gentrification. Our biggest fear um, is that we will lose our cultural hub. Which is why the Environmental Health Coalition from Barrio Logan have demanded new policies from San Diego, especially because they say new development approved by the city has sped up gentrification. You are speeding up gentrification because you're increasing the land value and you're giving developers incentive to tear down housing that is currently affordable. Earlier this year, the San Diego City Council approved their community plans, which requires more affordable housing and prevents displacement of residents in new developments. Mom and pop shops close a lot. Um, they're, they're basically gone in the, in the heart of Barrio Logan, um, but we still have a, vi a vibrant mom and pop shop in Logan, and we're fearful that that's next. For now, EHC continues to work with community leaders and the city. Regina Yurita, CBS 8. Regina, thank you. Meantime, a big bank is giving San Diego County millions of dollars to help people of color become homeowners. Ariana Cohen is in Sherman Heights with more on the new program and who qualifies. Many people gathered here at the Sherman Heights Community Center to celebrate a multi-million dollar Wells Fargo grant awarded to the San Diego Housing Commission to help people of color become homeowners in San Diego. September 21, 2022 to be Home Ownership Equity Day in the city of San Diego. Congratulations. An expanded effort to help more people of color in San Diego become homeowners launched today with the support of a $7.5 million grant from the Wells Fargo Foundation. It's important to Wells Fargo because this is uh, really one of our signature grants uh, that we're really proud of. Uh, we think it's going to do fantastic work uh, in the community, um, but in particular in closing the, the racial homeownership gap. Only 29% of homes are owned by black families, while 35% of homes are owned by Latino families. In comparison to nearly 55% of homes owned by white families, according to a San Diego Housing Commission Urban Institute study. We want you here because the diversity is the strength of this city and home ownership is the power that helps to provide the stability the city needs to move forward. So again, thank you to Wells Fargo. The grant comes from Wells Fargo's Wealth Opportunity Restored Through Home Ownership or WORTH initiative, a $60 million national effort to address systematic barriers to home ownership for people of color. There are systemic barriers to closing the racial wealth gap. And um, when we heard from the Housing Commission, uh, really in-depth, uh, detailed knowledge of what some of those barriers were and uh, really comprehensive strategies around how they were going to address those barriers. I'm so proud that we were on the ground floor of this and that we're one out of eight municipalities chosen nationwide to take on this responsibility of dispersing the $7.5 million. We were taught growing up, you know, the homeownership was very, very important, but we see the gaps, right, in our families and in our communities as something that, you know, sometimes people feel like it's unattainable we're here to tell people it's not. Wells Fargo also recently launched a special credit program to help eligible minority homeowners to lower their interest rates and reduce monthly mortgage payments. For black people, there is a double standard, discrimination, and we can right that wrong as long as we're willing to admit it. This funding is expected to change the lives of 5,000 families of color by helping them with home ownership. For CBS 8, I'm Ariana Cohen. 
The Golden State is clearly a popular one among the younger generations. Millennials and Gen Z rank it as their top choice. But a new study shows something that may surprise you about San Diego. Here again is Ariana Cohen. What is not to love about San Diego? A new study says Americans voted this city as one of the most desirable, but also one of the top overrated cities. Here's why. People either love or hate California. Despite ranking as the second best state to live in, California is also considered the least desirable state, with every one in four Californians saying it's one of the five worst in the U.S. Clever, a real estate data company commissioned by HomeBay, surveyed 1,000 Americans. They voted San Diego as the third most desirable city in the U.S., but also the 10th most overrated. That's why it was ranked as one of the more overrated cities was because of the economic factors. But what put San Diego in the most desirable category is the 35 miles of coastline, all of the beautiful recreational activities that you can do outside, mostly year round. So what else makes a city desirable? According to nearly two thirds of Americans, it's an affordable cost of living, followed by a high quality of life, low crime rates, nice weather and natural beauty. Beautiful locations and they are a great place to raise a family because of all of the recreational and cultural activities that you have access to. And I think that's why there is the paradox of it being both desirable and overrated. A majority of Americans agree that high crime rates, expensive living costs, and high population density make a city overrated. The top 10 most desirable cities, according to the survey, are Virginia Beach at number one, followed by Seattle, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Phoenix, Denver, Miami, Nashville, and Tampa. While the top 10 most overrated cities also include include Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Dallas, Miami, Las Vegas, Seattle, Washington, D.C., Houston, and finally, San Diego. According to the study, the top reasons Americans would move to a different city or state is a great job opportunity and lower cost of living. To see the full study, head to CBS8.com. For now, I think I'll stay right here in America's finest city. For CBS 8, I'm Ariana Cohen. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Born and raised, it certainly gets my top pick. Ariana, thanks. Well, cruise season is officially underway at the Port of San Diego. This season, more than 140 ships will leave from the Embarcadero, carrying about 460,000 passengers altogether. It's estimated that each ship that home ports here generates about $2 million in revenue for San Diego businesses. The cruise industry anticipates this season will be the busiest since 2010. Well, we have an update now on those mysterious lights that were seen hovering over Pacific Beach Monday night, just north of Crystal Pier. One witness told us the lights appeared out of thin air and stuck around for about 15 minutes. We made several calls to various agencies as well as the military. Finally, the Coast Guard told us one of their helicopters saw the lights and flew to them. They were able to communicate with an Air Force aircraft who said that their pilots were performing exercises involving flares. CBS 8 is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with the San Diego Padres and one of the most popular Norteño bands in the world. As we take you in the Zevely Zone, Jeff is in East Lake at the recording studios of Los Tucanes de Tijuana. On Sunday, October 2nd, after the Padres beat up on the White Sox, San Diego fans will win for a second time. When you hear the hit song, La Chona, gigantic crowds follow. La música para nosotros es... For us, music is our religion, our life. Since 1987, Los Tucanas de Tijuana have sold more than 15 million albums and toured the world with lead singer Mario Quintero. I understand that you wrote 
all of these number one hits on the wall. So in this wall you can see the achievements of our career. I wrote these songs along with the help of my colleagues here. Last year, following a Padre game, the band expected 3,000 fans. But bass player Luis Casares told us 17,000 showed up. It was exciting to see uh, all the people, all the Hispanic people. We had a great time, all the people singing, dancing our songs. The concert was such a hit, they'll do it again this year on Sunday, October 2nd. It celebrates the community that we live in, and so it's really important for us to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Emily Wittig, director of marketing for the Padres, says the band is the perfect capper to their weekend-long fiesta. But they're based out of Tijuana, and the fans here that live across the border as well as here in San Diego love them. They're back for a second year in a row. The concert will take place here at Petco Park after the game. CBS 8 is giving away two prize packs that include tickets to the game, tickets to the concert, and this specially branded Padres Hispanic Heritage hat. Contest winners get four tickets to the game and concert along with hats. When Los Tucanos de Tijuana opened at Coachella, 60,000 people showed up. And every member of the band is a Padre fan, including Alfredo Gonzalez and Gustavo Labrada. Acertado para la gente. Having appeared at Petco last year was something that was very good for us, but it was also something that was very good for our fans. Considered to be the Rolling Stones of Norteño music, Los Tucanas hope this becomes a Petco party every year. Or, as the band likes to say, Boy Padre! Boy <laughs> Padre! In the Zevoli Zone, <laughs> Jeff Zevoli, CBS. <laughs>makes me want to dance for your chance to win this prize pack to the Padres game and Los Tucanes de Tijuana Hispanic Heritage Concert on October 2nd. Go to cbsa.com slash contest. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for staying informed. Hope you join me each week as I take you around San Diego. For CBSA, I'm Jenny Day. Take good care.